Hey everyone, welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm kind of getting over a little bit of a head cold here, so uh, sorry for the the break. Sorry for keeping everybody hanging. I feel really bad about that. Um, you know, like I said on my post, I just haven't had time uh, to to put any kind of quality material together. I didn't want to just get on camera and talk, so. <clears throat> um, Thanks for your patience, and I hope everybody kept their studies up while we were away. And, uh, you know, uh, learning language, again, is a lot about just spending time doing it, whether it's, you know, attending these classes or watching, watching TV, Japanese TV, or talking to Japanese people, or just, you know, reading a book or studying flashcards. You know, a lot of, a lot of learning language is putting in the time and staying motivated by, uh, you know, using various resources and, and things like that. So hopefully me being here keeps everybody motivated uh, a little bit more. Uh, but um, also wanted to say that as I posted that office hours are basically canceled at this point. Um, there hasn't really been any attendance there, which, you know, is okay. I mean, we were hoping to be there if anybody needed us, but uh, I guess nobody really did. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure everybody's really busy. So, you know, um, and obviously the, uh, Reddit, the learn Japanese subreddit and the class subreddit are pretty good resources just to ask kind of general questions. And obviously you can just get online and Google anything really too. So, um, you know, but, I'll try to keep my office hours open after this session and after my weekly Thursday session. So that way, you know, we can, I can get on live with people and uh, you can ask any kind of questions that you have. Um, gonna keep an eye on the, the chat room tonight. Try to keep an eye on the chat room tonight as there aren't any TAs except for Wooney. But Wooney, I swear, he, he just lives in this chat room. I don't, he's always here, but he never says anything. I don't know. <laughs> what that's about, but, uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything, just go ahead and post them in the general chat, and I'll try to keep an eye on that and um, uh, answer any questions that come out, but uh, today we're going to cover pronouns, and uh, we're going to cover, like, here, there, where, over there, right here, um, it's called uh, Koso Ado, and I don't even know if it's called that. That's what I called it, but uh, maybe some of you know like a really common word, Koko, is here. Uh, so just kind of the ways to say here, there, um, over there, kind of over there, right there. Uh, also, you can attribute it to Piwa. I'll stop. We're, we're going to get to that. That's, that's, uh, that's the second part of the lesson today. Hello, Mandy. Welcome, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the class. Seeing a few new faces, faces here. Maybe it's just I'm not cl paying close enough attention uh, before, but I think I see a few new faces here, which is nice in the chat room anyway. But uh, today, I guess we'll just go ahead and start off with pronouns. I have a little trip tip, but I want to save that for later and get right into the language. Um, you know, last lesson I kind of felt like I was a little bit choppy and not really flowing very well. Um, I wasn't really sure how, uh, you know, how good of a tool it is for me to just go over to a screen share of a document and just kind of type things as I speak. I'm not sure how people are uh, receiving that, but I'll try to make it a little bit smoother this time. And um, I'm going to, you know, try to integrate some of the words with uh, just a few example sentences along the way. So that way it kind of breaks the redundancy of just basically me covering a bunch of vocab words in a row. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, the, the Google document or a, a document here, so you can see. Uh, well, so I can just type the words and talk about them, as, and you can see them. So here we go. And just to FYI, today's lesson and possibly a lot of future lessons are going to be spent mostly inside of a document here because you know as we're going more over more and more language intensive material. Uh, obviously, you know, it's 
it's going to be stuff that I'm going to need to type out and show you as if I was, you know, doing it on a chalkboard in a classroom. So, um, so for pronouns, you know, just like any anything that hopefully you've probably kind of seen already in Japanese, uh, it's all wrapped in in uh, politeness, and there's different levels of politeness. Obviously, that's kind of just a reoccurring theme in Japanese. Get used to it, learn it. Uh, live by it. It's very important. And, you know, if you really want to be Japanese or you want to, you know, really communicate with Japanese people, then, um, you know, understanding the levels of politeness is key. So, um, I just want to start with pronouns again, starting off with me or I. Uh, maybe some of you already know this, but let me get over my Japanese script here. Watashi. The kanji for that is right there. Watashi. Watashi. That means myself. And this is can be used by uh, males and females alike in a more formal setting. For males, it's definitely used in a more formal setting. Uh, for females, they can use it in a, a more informal setting to still have the same meaning. But if you're a male um, and you're wanting to say me uh, in a, a little bit more informal, you can say boku, 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 and again, all these words are going to be on the vocab list, so you can catch them later. But uh, let me and let me know in the chat if these aren't big enough, if you can't see these, if they're not clear enough. So. Uh, Again, that's that's not something that boku is not something you want to say to, like your you know your fiance's parents or um, you know your boss or something. It's it's informal. It's something you would say to your friend. And another one is ore, as some of you have already pointed out in the chat. Ore, that's I'd, I would say honestly that's a little bit even more informal than boku. It's really kind of almost on the on the level of slang. Um, and you know, when you're talking in everyday conversation with friends, you definitely hear ode a lot. Um, it's definitely kind of a masculine, you know, way to say me. And you know, it's kind of interesting because there really isn't a whole lot of slang ways, slang versions of, okay. there isn't a lot of uh, slang versions of how to, how to say, um, the female me, it's really just watashi. And actually, there's another one, which is washi, which is really just watashi. Um, and a lot of times you'll see this in Japanese colloquialism, they'll just drop like a consonant. Um, it's just kind of like, you see it in English too, or probably any language where you just kind of drop sounds when you become colloquial. And uh, so th in this, instead of saying watashi, you would say washi, washi. And you can almost kind of sense that ta being there, but it's not there. So, watashi becomes washi, washi. And, uh, and another um, actually physical way to communicate that I left out of the last physical communication lesson was uh, when you're talking about yourself or, you know, if somebody's asking who it is and you say me, or you ask, are you talking about me? Uh, the Japanese people point to their nose. So... If you're talking about yourself, you're asking, are you talking about me? Then you point to your nose. Um, I think maybe in America you would like thumb your chest or um, kind of point to yourself in some general direction. But in Japan, it's um, you, you actually point to your own nose. And almost, you actually put your finger on your nose. And I think that may be a little bit more of a feminine gesture too. So, um, but you, you do see, you do see males do it certainly. So, um, Moving on to uh, that, that's pretty much it for for me. Um, so moving on to you, really, you want to just call somebody by their name and just add a, a suffix to it. So, like, my name is Robu, and then San. Um, so this can be suffixed to San. Can you? I'm sure you all know this either. Definitely those of you who like watch anime or any kind of Japanese anything or know really, even if you've seen the Karate Kid, you know 
you know, son is Daniel's son. That's just kind of, it's like Mr. And uh, so it's a common suffix to any name. And it's really commonly added to, to um, family names, not given names. So, um, I think I'm pretty sure you can you can put it on both, but it's more commonly, you know, you don't. This is kind of a formal thing, so you don't really use it for like close friends. So, whenever you're not talking about close friends, usually you're referring to somebody by their family name or their last name. So, you want to fix the son on the end of that. Also, uh, a way to refer to somebody else is. Um, well, I guess you, you can say this would be translated to you in certain situations, but uh, you could say um, a person, his name, Robu, no, a possessive particle in Hulk. Robu no Hulk. Or Robu no Kata. Ho or kata, these are uh, pronounced differently, but the same kanji. And, uh, oops. They mean, by themselves, they can mean way or the path or, um, and, but when you're, t but they can also be used for people. So, uh, when you when at, when combined with a possessive particle, no, they can become, um, you know, this person or that person, and you can actually add it to, like nationalities. So America no kata, yeah, he's American. Amer America no kata, America no ho, uh, they're American. So uh, another way to say you, which is pretty widely known, is anata. And anata, anata, and that's you want to kind of avoid using that again because it's very direct. And as I kind of emphasized in some previous lessons, in general, directness is avoided in Japanese. And um, so you you kind of want to be careful using this. And it's another shortened version of it is anta. This is extremely informal and extremely, really, it's almost borderline like offensive. Uh, this is something you only want to use to very, very close people who are very, very close to you, and people who you know will never get offended by what you say. If you, you know, obviously being a foreigner and learning, maybe you know, if if you learn words here and there, and you learn it as something, and then you use it as something without really knowing the, you know, the contact the context of how polite it is Japanese people unless there's some kind of like really traditionalist um, person that you randomly meet they probably aren't going to be upset with you or anything like that I mean if especially if it's somebody that you're meeting through like an exchange program or in the university somebody that you make friends with when you're over there or you know something like that somebody who's who's willing to teach you Japanese and who understands that you know you're learning Japanese they're not really going to care as long as you show interest in learning the, the proper usage, but you know, obviously, if you're a Japanese person and you use the, you know, you use this to somebody that they would get very offended, and so you do kind of have to be careful, you know, especially around strangers. But um, even really, almost as offensive or more offensive than that is all my, uh, which is actually Omaya can be used in an intimate setting um, it can be used for like a husband and wife but again in a in a colloquial situation or in a, in a formal situation or a situation where you're talking to a superior you definitely want to avoid using Omaya uh, is pretty pretty offensive and pretty vulgar so you'll see the Japanese Technically, doesn't really have curse words. I guess they kind of do. There are words that they bleep out on like tel television shows and stuff, but um, I would say they're kind of on a different level than than American curse words. They're not as is bad. But um, so moving on from you, that's pretty much it for you. Uh, so we've done me, watashi, ore, boku, washi. 
you, Anata, Nani Nani san, um, Robu san, Omae. So where we are from that is him. We're going to do him and her. Uh, him, her, and us. And him is Kare. Or Kareshi. Kimi, Kimi, uh, Nani Nani Kun. You'll see me using this a couple times here tonight. And Nani Nani um, is Nani is what? And Nani Nani is just well. I guess you can see it on my tango ring there. It's like. It can just it kind of means like whatever. So like whoever son or whoever coon like you know any person's name coon and uh, this character here is is important to remember. Um, it's a repeater. I don't know what I, I think there's. I know I'm sure there's a name for it, but I, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, but um, it's to repeat the kanji pronunciation before it. It doubles the kanji. It doubles the word. So nani 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 becomes nani nani. Um, it's part of where we are going to cover that in a later lesson. It's going to be part of an entire lesson. So uh, feel free to look it up and check it out. But it's on the vocab list. But we will cover that later in more detail. Sorry if you're getting a little background noise there. Um, so, and then lastly is I to. Huh? So these are the different ways to say him. Um, talking about a male, kare kare she can also be boyfriend actually, but it can also just mean him. Uh, kimi, if you notice, kimi here and kun here are the same kanji, and so just like san from Daniel san or Robu san or nani nani san. When you're talking about a male, you affix uh, or suffix kun, so Daniel kun or uh, nani nani kun, and it becomes a little bit more informal. And usually, it's used for like somebody talking about their students, or um, yeah, it's it's generally used as a talking about somebody who's lower than you. So you don't want to call your boss, you know, Yamada kun or so whatever his name is. So. Like you wouldn't call me since I'm your sensei. You wouldn't call me Robokun. You would call me Robo Sensei. Um, and then Aitsu, Aitsu, is very. It's it's pretty informal. It's only really used when you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Okay. Iteration mark. Somebody put it in the chat. It's it's an iteration mark. Is what this is. Um, yeah, the Aitsu is really, it's pretty informal. It's really mostly used when you're talking about others in a conversation with someone. So you're having a conversation with, you know, your friend talking about someone else and you refer to them as Aitsu. You wouldn't really, uh, you, you really, this isn't used to like directly refer to anybody. Um, yeah, I guess none of these are really used to directly refer to anybody, but um, Aitsu is, is more informal and probably implies that whoever you're talking about is, you know, of a, a lower stature than you. So um, that's that's pretty much it for him. So for her, oops, uh, for her it's a lot less, kind of like um, the ways to say me or I in Japanese. There's a lot less for the females. Um, but and and actually to wait it and and the ways to say her there's a little bit less too, which really just probably resonates the fact that sexism is uh, very prevalent in Japan and I saw on Reddit actually on their subreddit Japan recently there was a survey done recently and they said that over half of uh, all Japanese people think that the women the women should 
you know, stay at home and not work. So it just shows you that, you know, the the traditional male female roles are very alive in Japan, and uh, this kind of just you. And that's why the language is so interesting because you can see things that are uh, parts of their society and culture that are you know produced inside of the language. And yeah, yeah, as someone said in the chat, they got really really low ranking in gender equality and. 101st place in the world, so that's <laughs> that's really bad. Um, it's gender equality. Gender equality is 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 very bad over there. Um, but anyway, moving on. So yeah, just kind of it just kind of reflects itself in the language even because you see that you know the males have more colloquial and derogatory terms to describe each other and themselves, and that's kind of lacking on the female side because uh, I would assume because um, they aren't given, you know, for, for a female to to speak about to to call themselves uh, by to say me, but do it in a kind of you know low level form would be just um, I don't know. I guess it would just be unbecoming, too unbecoming. <laughs> uh, Oh, Korea. Yeah, so anyway, so to say her is uh, Kanojo, Kanojo. And you can see from, let me see here actually. So yeah, the Kadashi and the Kanojo are the same kanji. The, uh, initially the same kanji and actually this kanji is also used in uh, wait I'm sorry I'm getting lost here never mind so yeah Kadashi and Kanojo the first initial kanji is the same um, whoops Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, I got my. Uh, there we go. I put my browser in full screen on accident. Anyway, moving on. You can also say "aitsu" for females, like we talked about males, but uh, it's kind of a more derogatory term. Don't want to say that to people's face. Uh, you can also say "yatsu." Ano yatsu. Yatsu can describe really a male or female, and it's also very derogatory. Um, so be careful with these. These are kind of colloquial slang terms, but you know they're there and uh, you know f talking to people on the street, talking to friends, you definitely need to know them. They're going to be you're going to hear them a lot, especially in anime. I think, or excuse me, anime, uh, manga, things like that. You know, popular culture, popular uh, media. You're going to see and hear these phrases a lot. Uh, and the female version of kun. So if you remember, nani nani kun. Uh, for females, chan, chan, chan. Chan. So nani nani chan. Nani nani chan. So uh, female's name Chan, and that's that's you know normally when you use this Kun or Chan, it's a um, it's used with their first name as opposed to their last name. So the Sun would be used for their last name, and the Kun or Chan would be used for the first name. And you know sometimes these can be these can be added to the chan can be added to uh, females' names or males' names, and sometimes you can use boku. Females will use boku or ore, ore to describe themselves, and it's just kind of another one of those things where there's a rule for it, but the rule's broken, and there's exceptions. So I guess just don't be surprised if you hear it used in other, you know, what you think is for a male or a female be used in the opposite, because it will happen. 
um, you know, people describe themselves in various ways, obviously. So finally, I want to talk about us and them. So us is uh, tachi, and you'll see this tachi. You've already we just learned watashi, which means me. So uh, this tachi, you don't really want to call it a pluralization, but um, it's put on the end of certain pronouns um, and nouns too to pluralize them to make it into a group. But it doesn't pluralize any kind of other words, any other uh, nouns like. It only pluralizes nouns that are talking about people, and it doesn't always necessarily pluralize every noun that's talking about people. But it's a useful thing to know if you know, like the word for friend, tomodachi. It's the same dachi, it's the same character, tomodachi. So uh, friends. So watashi. Another way to say we is ware. Ware. Um, yeah, hito tachi. There's a lot of different tachis out there. Uh, sorry, I was reading the chat. But ware ware is another uh, way to say we. And this is another example of using the uh, some the rep kanji repetition character or the iteration mark, as Kagayaki pointed out. Uh, ware ware or ware. Oops. You can also say watashi domo. And wata domo is another way to say or to pluralize uh, people. So watashi domo. And these. Uh, there's actually a more formal way to say watashi, and it's watakushi. So you can see that when I type watakushi in here, I'm typing something different from watashi here, uh, but it's coming up with the same kanji because it's just a different way to pronounce it for more formality. Uh, you can also say watakushi domo, but that's that's pretty formal. You don't really need to worry about that too much. You can also add the tachi onto boku or ore. So boku, if you remember the more derogatory form or informal form of ni for a male uh, can be boku tachi to pluralize it or ore as well. Ore tachi. Ore tachi. So uh, you can see that this tachi is is pretty regularly used, and this is the kind of thing that really, once you start learning kanji and really studying kanji, you'll start to see these things that just start to click. When you're like, "Oh, okay, I see how that's used in this and that," and that's why it means that. You know, you kind of see it, it combined with various different things, and you start to, you know, you get this kind of intuitive sense of how the kanji is used. So, you know, just try to keep an eye out for uh, for that kind of thing to to occur and. Um, you know, as you're, as you're studying the language. And um, like somebody talked in the, in the chat, they, when, I, when I went over Tachi for Watash Tachi, they immediately thought of Hito Tachi, uh, if you see it in the, in the IRC chat, which means people. Um, so pluralizing a person, um, you know, that clicked with them, and immediately they recognized that that was uh, a kanji that they recognized in another, uh, another usage. So, um, just really quickly going over them. Uh, well, you know, I guess I'll just do it real quick. Um, a few ways to say them. It's pretty pretty simple, but uh, anohito. Oops. oops, I mistyped something. Anohito. That's funny that actually we just went over that because we're going to use that right now. Um, I didn't even realize. So 
Hitotachi's people and those people, so them. And this ano right here is part of the a no or a ko so do that we're going to cover the second half of today's lesson. So really, uh, this isn't a word in and of itself. It's actually kind of two words. But those, ano is those, and hitotachi is uh, people, so them. Translates literally to them. You can also say, if you remember, we, we talked about earlier, aitsu. You can say aitsura. Or, surprise, surprise, aitsura tachi. So again, we're seeing tachi again. Um, those are some ways to say them that I, could, that I thought of. And, you know, there's probably... A number of other ways to to say a few of these uh, you me her him uh, them words but I just whatever didn't think of them um, you know and they're probably only really they only really vary by the levels of formality and informality so um, I'll go ahead and back out of the uh, document here so you can uh, get a look at my pretty face again and Just kind of break the class up a little bit here. I want to talk a little bit about the trip tip today, which is just a short thing, just about where you can stay in Japan, what places you can stay, and you know, hotels and stuff like that. And uh, in Japan, they obviously have hotels. Um, really, you could say they have motels, but they don't call them motels. It's just like cheap hotels. But you know, they have high class places in, in Japan, the hotels over there. They have some really, really nice five star, all the international hotel chains over there. Uh, you can definitely drop some major dime on, on the hotels over there. So if you're looking for an extremely classy place with a great view, uh, you know, exquisite room service and restaurant and, you know, top floor bar, all that stuff, you can definitely find it in Tokyo and really any of the major cities in Japan. Um, you know, if you're wanting to, the cool thing about it is if you wanted to do a kind of a, stay in a little bit more traditional type of place, they have what's called a ryokan, ryokan, and uh, that's going to be where your room is actually tatami mats, and there's no beds, it's, you know, you have a futon, and, um, you know, the traditional way that the Japanese do things on the tatami mats and you know traditionally Japanese sleep on the floor and sit on the floor there, there weren't any chairs or anything or you know raised beds traditionally and a lot of people still do that, still do that in their own home a lot of people very common and, uh, and obviously another you know space saving feature of Japanese rooms and hotel rooms and yokans are you know the futon is like a kind of a soft mattress um, and then there's a blanket basically and when you you have a main room that either is your hotel room or maybe a bedroom in a home and you know during the day the mat, the tatami is it's just a you know a soft mattress and a, a, a blanket so you just fold it up and put it in the closet and they have you know closets specifically for uh, the tatami or the um, futon and so the room becomes you know a livable room during the day um, and then at nighttime the futon comes out and you make the bed. So literally the bed just kind of goes into the wall uh, for the night. And if you're going to stay at a ryokan, which I would highly recommend if you're going to Japan, especially as a tourist, uh, you know, to stay in a ryokan for a few nights because you really get that Japanese feel. Usually they'll have like some art on the wall that's traditional and it'll be the tatami, traditional tatami mats and the futon. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's another option. Um, outside of the hotel, which is going to be, you know, very Western style with a bed and all that. Um, if you're a young traveler on a, on a small budget, uh, there are hostels in Japan and a lot of the major cities, um, all the major cities are hostels, which are extremely cheap. If you don't know what a hostel is, uh, they're all over Europe. And, you know, it's basically just like a shared room where you can pay a really cheap amount, like 10 or $15, $20 to stay there. Uh, and, you know, you're sharing it like basically bunk beds with as many people who book the room for the night. So it could be, you know, 10 people in a room, but usually it's all young people and travelers. And a lot of times you also have to become a member of some like, I can't remember, it's been so long since I did it, but like an international hostel organization 
and you have to book your room ahead of time. So you can't just usually you can't just like show up there that day and inspect your room. You have to kind of uh, plan it and contact the hostel and let them know that you're coming. But extremely affordable and for young people, you know, great uh, a great way to to live cheaply in Japan for you know an extended travel for a few weeks. Um, easy, readily available in Tokyo and, and searchable on the internet. Um, another pretty cheap way to, to, to live, especially in, and I think, I don't know how, how prevalent these are in some of the, the smaller, medium sized cities, but uh, in Tokyo, and I think, you know, the Kansai region, Osaka, Kyoto, there are the capsule hotels and the businessman hotels. A lot of you probably have heard of these. The capsule hotels are just like a little tube. With a TV in it, sometimes I don't know, maybe there isn't TV, but basically you just go in there and go to sleep. And um, the businessman hotels are basically just like the, the room is just the width of a bed, and maybe they'll have like a little desk. So it's just a teeny little room. Um, and these are used for by businessmen usually who, you know, either miss the last train or are too drunk to drive home or, you know, stay in, in the city. Uh, on on the weeknights and only go home on the weekends and that's kind of where they stay during the week so pretty reasonable prices I think they're like 20 30 40 dollars sometimes so you know um, compared to like a hotel which is going to be 70 80 bucks it's it's pretty cheap and um, the last option you have is really a, and you don't necessarily have to use these as a hotel but the love hotels and Abba Hotel and they actually have these in Japan uh, they're just basically rooms to rent out to have sex and you rent them by the hour, not by the night. So, um, I think a lot of them have 90 rates, but they're not really used for sleeping. They're used for, you know, hooking up with people, uh, discreetly. And it's actually very interesting because some of them you go into and instead of, there's like a, like a hotel window, but it's all blacked out and there's just like a, a vending machine where you pick your room with a button and put money in and pick your room with a button and like prints out a ticket that you put to get in the room. And there's a lot of different ways they're set up, but it's, it's really interesting to see kind of how, <laughs> how, uh, how you can get into, um, how you can get into these love hotels. I've been in a few of them. They have like vending machines inside of them where they sell sexual sex toys and lubricants and, DVDs and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy. The beds are like heart shaped and it's pretty crazy. Um, the capsule hotels, it's usually like similar to somebody asked if there's bathrooms in the hostel or in the capsule hotels. I don't know if I've ever stayed in one actually, so I can't say for sure, but I, what I would, what I would uh, guess is that there's a bathroom probably like on every floor or, um, you know, uh, you know, a communal bathroom. And actually that's a good point because, Almost every hotel, especially like if it's a decent hotel with a number of floors or a Yokon, especially Yokons, there's always going to be a bath on the top floor. And um, when I say bath, we already talked about that in another class, but the traditional Japanese baths where, um, you know, you have to wash yourself and it's like a communal bath where everybody's getting in. So check that out. If you ever go to a Japanese hotel or Yokon, check out the top floor where the bath should be. Um, or there's maybe the second to top floor if the top floor is a, is a restaurant. But Anyway, so other than that, I would just recommend uh, befriending Japanese people and trying to mooch off them and stay in their homes because uh, a lot of people are willing to let you do that from my personal experience. So anyway, um, moving on, wanted to, uh, I was going to talk about some senses. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, my screen share here. And... I wanted to cover a really important topic, which is Koso Ado. And, you know, really with, with these words I'm about to teach you, the words I just taught you, and the words that we've gone over so far, and some very basic grammatical principles that we've kind of already gone over, you can really get, get pretty far in Japan. Um, and, you know, if you have a dictionary, like a mobile dictionary, or you know you just have some important vocab that you've memorized um, you really won't have to worry about uh, you know emergency situations where you need to communicate a basic idea uh, with these 
or answer basic questions or ask basic questions uh, with these words you can you can really get there but so when I say kosoado um, well, let's go ahead and start with ko and so with ko you can say koko kore kono and um, kochi oops so you can see they all start with a ko and there's a kanji for the ko but it's not used and um, it's just another one of those things where if you love kanji and you want to learn it go ahead uh, it is there but uh, you don't need to know it definitely don't need to know it that's ko so koko is here kore is this Kono is also this. Um, and Kochi is actually also this, but it kind of depends on what you're talking about. So the main the main idea here is that um, you want to understand that ko, whatever, koko, kore, kono, kochi, it's like you're talking about something that's right in front of you or very near you, within arm's reach. Um, so, so is the next step away from where you are, so like over there. So soko over there. Sore that. Sore is that. Sono is that as well. And sochi is uh, over there. Oh, I'm sorry, and kochi is not way well, yeah, here. Not this, but uh, here. And sochi is there, that way. So really moving in uh, a linear fashion away from yourself ah soko are ano kono or i'm sorry uh, achi excuse me so here there over there this that that over there so Koko is here, Soko is there, Asoko is over there. Kore, this, Sore, that, Are, that over there. Kono, this, Sono, that, Ano, that. And if you remember, this Ano is what we used to describe them. And Kono, sono, ano are commonly used to refer to people. Uh, so, kono hito, kono hito tachi, these people, this person. Ano hito tachi, them, they. And then finally, kochi, uh, sochi, achi is uh, this. And actually, these the chi's are used a little bit more informally. So. Um, I think actually most most of the times in college courses you're just going to learn koso a you won't learn uh, or you're you're going to learn koko so kore kono but not kochi uh, eventually you'll learn it obviously but initially you wouldn't learn it because it's kind of informal and a little bit uh, it's almost slang and then finally the last one is do learn it on a firm here. But uh, sorry, this is, I'm just going to delete these. The last one is do so doko, dore, kore. Oh, I'm sorry, gosh, dore, and uh. Dochi. So this is where, doko is where, dore is which, um, I'm sorry, don't know. Don't know is what or which, and dochi is which. A little bit more informal. So you can see that the de and the no, kore and kono this, sore, sono that, dore, dono, um, which are kind of almost interchangeable. So um, 
I'm sorry, I really have to uh, go to the restroom, so <laughs> I'll be right back in like 30 seconds, a minute. So um, if you want to ask a question in IRC, go ahead, and when I come back, I'll check it out, but I'll be right back. Okay, my apologies. Um, kind of drinking beer, so anyway. <laughs> yes, one minute. I'm very fast. Um, so those are obviously really important and basic words along with the pronouns. Um, <laughs> so what I want to do is kind of get into just a few sentences. You know, we can make a lot of sentences with what we've learned today and so far. So, like for example, let's say like my dog. Watashi, if you remember, is me or my. No, the possessive particle, grammatical structure, ine. Dog. Watashi no ine. My dog. Now, if you want to formalize this, you just say Rakashi no ine desu. So, if you want to say it's our dog, like maybe it's your family, what would you say? Watashi tachi no inu desu. Watashi tachi no inu. Or tachi no inu desu. Told you I'd make it in under a minute. <laughs> Guess he didn't wash his hands. <laughs> That's good, man. Um, me? <laughs> hey, this is my keyboard, okay? Nobody else is touching this except for me. Um, <laughs> so, let's go ahead and add an adjective in here. So, a new adjective we'll learn today is black. So, we know Watashi. So, try to think in your head, how would you say, uh, my black cat? You would say, Watashi no my kuroi black. Remember, it's an E adjective. Neko. Watashi no kuroi neko. Des. If you want to add the des, you can. You don't have to. So you can see that if you want to say black dog, you could just add kuroi here to make it kuroi inu. Now, how do you want to emphasize this? So let's say you want to say it's it's my black cat, but you want to emphasize it. You want to say, no, it's my black cat. And actually, you could say kuro neko. You could say kuro neko. Um, it's just kind of a, a preference, really. Um, somebody in chat typed, to answer the question, typed, watashi no kuro neko. Um, It's like, it's basically, they're interchangeable, um, but yeah, anyway, so if you were to say, to emphasize it, if you were to emphasize the fact that it was your black cat, like, you know, maybe somebody was confused, all you would do is just add yo, right? Just add yo on the end of the sentence. Watashi no kuroi neko desu yo. Watashi no kuroi neko yo. So... Obviously, you know, this basic sentence structure 
you can interchange the noun or pronoun with the with the uh, other noun or adjective noun and make you know a litany of different sentences. So I want to go ahead and use a few of these pronouns that we use, or excuse me, that we learned today um, in some sentences and do some example dialogues uh, to see you know kind of how we can use these. Now, so Coco, whoops, oh, I think my, uh, Yeah, my uh, document's acting up here. Are you guys uh, Are you guys seeing this? I I exited out of it. Are you guys still with me on Are you waiting on camera? I guess I can just check it. Okay, we're here. Good. Okay. So, ここの Pasokon. Okay. Why is this not working? Okay, here we go. Sorry. Okay, so what would you think this means? Pasokon means uh, computer. Excuse me, this is wrong. Koko no pasokon desu ka? So, koko no pasokon desu ka? You know desu is just ending a sentence. Hopefully you remember ka is a question mark. Or a question makes a sentence a question. Koko is here in a possessive particle. So this computer. So this is really like a continuation of an earlier dialogue where um, somebody would say, hey, Will you grab that computer, or hey, will you turn on that computer, or something like that? And you say, uh, this computer. You would say, koko no pasokon desu ka, or just koko no pasokon ka, or you can even take all of it out and just use your intonation and say, koko no pasokon. And then uh, an answer to that, if you were wanting to say yes, that that computer, you could say, eh, so this. If you, if you remember the last lesson when we talked about how to say yes and no, uh, eh, so this, or you could say hi, so this, so kono pasokon desu ka? Hi, so this, eh, so this. Now let's say we wanted to say where is she? So if you remember the word for she, kanojo, wa, subject marker particle, grammatical structure, doko, we just learned this today, where, and then deska. Again, the formal version of this, kanojo wa doko deska, kanojo wa doko deska. You could also just say kanojo wa doko, or kanojo wa doko ka. But the, the, the safest way and the most polite way is to say, Kanojo wa doko desu ka? To answer that, you could say, um, Japan. Eto, Nihon. Eto, Nihon desu. Um, she's in Japan. Uh, Japan. So, Kanojo wa doko desu ka? Eto, Nihon desu. So, obviously, you could just replace this with she's in class or she's at the train station. You know, based off of the question. So another one, um, you can say, well, you can also just use a person's name in this sentence structure. So like, Robu, Kun, me. That's or when I say me, I'm talking about like it's my name. I'm typing here, so Robokun. Robokun wa doko desu ka? 
Where's Rob? Um, and there, you know, you can say, so again, you can take off the desk ka or take off the desk. Robokun wa doko? Robokun wa doko ka? Or Robokun wa doko desu ka? Or, you know, if you're really informal, you could say Robu, Robu wa doko desu ka? You know, if you're talking to a close friend or about a close friend. So how would you say he's over there? Asoko desu. Over there. Now, to answer this question using asoko desu, you, it's just a perfect example of Japanese using contextualized um, phrases, you know, so deriving the meaning from the context. So to just say asoko desu, you're saying over there. But um, technically what you would be saying here is robu wa Asoko desu. But it's already implied in, in the context of the question that you're talking about me. So you can just say asoko desu or asoko. So that, those are just kind of some basic, uh, you know, sentences that you can, uh, you know, you can kind of interchange as you slowly were. You know, as you slowly learn these vocabulary words, or quickly learn these vocabulary words, um, you know, you can you can interchange adjectives, nouns, and pronouns, and uh, and really just, I mean, just with this with these basic particles, grammatical particles of no for the possessive and wa as a subject marker, um, and a few others that really aren't very hard to learn. Um, you know, you can really relay a lot of messages to people. So, you know, if you if you memorize the vocab, um, some basic vocab and, and these particles, you can really get far in Japan and, um, you know, maybe impress, impress some people and at least, you know, just survive over there. So, um, I would just recommend, you know, interchanging uh, new vocabulary words that you learn uh, within the different sentence structures. To, to really get some good practice. So, um, I think that's pretty much it for today's class. Uh, I think somehow I ended on the hour again. I don't know how I keep doing that, but uh, I guess that's a good thing. So, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I think that today I'm actually going to have to cancel my office hours because um, I have some family affairs to tend to and continue searching for a job. Uh, so sorry I won't be there available today if anybody was depending on that. But I have a few good prospects and some interviews that went well. So hopefully I'll get one soon. Um, Sunday is Christmas Eve, but I think or no, Sunday is Christmas Eve. Yeah, so we're good to go on Sunday. We'll see you on Sunday, everyone. Um, the vocab is posted already, so the vocab list from today is there, and I will make up a homework assignment today. And I'm going to try to make that homework assignment much more lengthy, and so that way you can really get some good practice in. And uh, yeah, so everyone, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in tonight, and we will see you next time. Minasan, arigatou gozaimasu. Sayonara.